It's going to be covered with wild flying bird women. We are here in Winooski in the sculpture garden of Leslie Fry, and it's full of magical creations. Growing up with a lot of imagination and a lot of books and finding it easy to live in alternate worlds and think about being otherworldly in different ways, sphinxes and bird women and so on. Last year, Leslie published a book about her work and the many mediums she's experimented with over the last five decades. You know, I've been an artist for a long time, really long time, decades. and. More and more as I get older, I'm just making what I damn well feel like. Just trying to create some texture and, and movement on the forms so they're not tight and boring. It's always nice to have an audience. I mean, an appreciative audience, not a distracting audience. Basically, I love sculpture in all the ways you can think of. It's like meeting a person. It's a real encounter. It's not an illusion hanging on a flat surface or on your screen to interact with. It's real. It's three-dimensional. You experience it with all your senses, not just your eyes. If somebody encounters one of my sculptures, whether it's a piece of public art or it's in a gallery or a museum, that they could have that sort of feeling of, you know, an encounter with a real being. I've lived where I am now in my studio in Winooski for 31 years, and I grew up in Stovermont and lived in the Burlington area since the early 70s when I went to UVM. You know, I was one of those kids that from when I was, you know, little kid, I knew I was going to be an artist. One of the reasons I'm a sculptor is because of mountains. You know, I grew up at the foot of Mount Mansfield and looked at it every day, skied it, hiked it, mountains and feeling like huge giant god goddess hands, you know, made them, sculpted them is partly why I'm a sculptor. With plaster, it's all about timing. And I'm not a patient person, which is probably why I'm a sculptor, because it teaches me patience. The early 90s is when I happened to be making work that was part of the zeitgeist. I've exhibited internationally. I think South Korea would be uh, the furthest place where I actually have a sculpture. If there are bits that I don't like, I, I hack them off and start all over again. So it's a little, you know, it's a little time consuming. <laughs> I mean, everything I do is time consuming. So many. I'm, I'm a little promiscuous. I'm a lot promiscuous with materials. And I see a material and I go, oh my God, that would be so fun to try to work with. Clay and plaster. And then when I bought this place and started making sculptures that could live outside concrete. But the ultimate to me in terms of sculpture is bronze, cast bronze. I mean, it's indestructible, so that's a really good feeling. I mean, I've done a lot of ephemeral sculptures too. All my work changed when I became a homeowner. I started making things for my home, I mean, outside, like claw feet covering concrete footings and gargoyles and outdoor sculpture. Oh, there's your shoe. Yeah, your that's shoe. right. <laughs> and this bird woman's got little high heels on. They're all gonna have different shoes. So what is it about you and the I, shoes? I don't know. Over here we have colossal acorn head. I mean, one of the reasons I have a sculpture garden is I kind of need to, you know, dig in the earth and be grounded. Well, I did buy this place 31 years ago. I can't believe it. And the first thing I did was plant this hedge around two sides of it to make kind of a green room. I call it semi-public, as in give a call or an email first, but I, I would like people to experience it. Is my cherry tree, and I have another one of those cloth feet. <sighs> all right. These are all concrete. She's a bird woman 
making her nest on top of this spiraling column. This connects to your home, being a yeah, nest builder. Yeah, you yeah, built a nest yes, here. yes, a very large nest. This is what you call low relief in sculpture. I know I'm talking like a teacher, but I can't help it. I've done, <laughs> been teaching for so many years. And these are also looking upward. You know, these are from the Palmer Love Park. I'm a big, big proponent of public art, art that anybody can see and access. In 1999, I completed, well, it's a pocket park, really, on the corner of Home Avenue and Shelburne Road by TJ Maxx in collaboration with Steven Schenker. So that's become its own little landmark. Those sculptures are my interpretation of a sphinx. They're part woman, part lion with wings. You know, some people hate it and find it creepy and, and some people love it, you know, but that's, hey, that goes with the territory of public art. Part of my, my um, success, if you want to call it that, as an artist is my persistence, but also, Eva, it's living in this community. And, and I've, I've never married, I don't have kids. My community is really important to me, and this has been a very supportive community. So I wanna make as much sculpture as I can before I get really old and, you know, not so strong. I think about my sculptures as if they're puppets, you know, that they're my little ambassadors out into the world, and they have, you know, they, they have their own animated, oh, and I have messed with animation too, you know, to give, a sculpture some life and let it live out in the world. I like that idea a lot. It kind of feels like we've been to another world. We will get stuck in Vermont with you again real soon. Thank you, Leslie, for taking us into your world. What did you see? Did you see? <laughs>